Hello, hello, hello. Hi, Moodles. Hi, Clark. Happy to have everyone back. We're going to be playing Baldur's Gate. There we go. Now it's working. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. Nom nom nom, delicious hand. Tastes like chicken. No chicken. Tastes like fish. Gentlemen, contain yourselves. This quarrel sells our feast. Besides, tastes like pork. <laughs> and what surprise is this? Brothers, look here. I have eyed yet another prize. Fortune favors our bellies. Stranger, be you friend or food. The mark is her measure. Show us the brand of the absolute. Um, I'll do you one better. I'm one of the Absolute's chosen disciples. Ooh, net 20. Yay. Hi, Art. Did my clapping get you up? Tell me. Right? Even I believed that. <laughs> Indeed. How regrettable that your meat must go unsavored. Food? Food. Not food. Friend. <laughs> I've noticed you don't bear a brand of your own. I've no use for the absolute. Or any god. I follow two masters only, gluttony and greed. The goblins understand my appetites. They sate my hunger for gold, and the rest sate my hunger for meat. Boss goblin give gold, we check brand, good deal. No talk. <laughs> Forget goblins. You should be fighting for me. I am, by all accounts, a student of higher commerce and extortion. Make me an offer. Tempt me. I'll pay you... No. A thousand gold after... You fight for me. Nice. 
our twice played serenade to my ears, my tasty kibble. We have a bargain. Take my bone horn. One blow, and the ground will quake with my family name. Use it when the need arises, and never a moment before. Ogre kill everyone around, then Ogre eats them. Yeah. Well spoken, indeed. Ogre kill everyone around. <laughs> you are quite the articulate Ogre. Am I not astonishing? A robust diet makes for a shrewd mind, you see. I am a gourmand. And you, a delicacy. Were I so lucky? I've seen a few other ogres in these parts. We follow the scents of blood and gold to all lands fertile, friend. And this land proves particularly fruitful. We will keep close. When you are ready, sound the horn. That might be worth a look. Rack support beam. Tarnished locket. This locket opens to reveal an intricate illustration of a stone tower. The words Eldrail, Strength and Unity are inscribed across the top. Ooh, lots of meat. More meat. And another sausage. All the camp supplies we could ever want. <laughs> Though clearly old, this handbill has managed to maintain its bold print over time. For one season only, see the play that sent Elturel's Everlight Theater into chaos. The sharp-tongued traveling troupe presents The Folly in the Fall, a tragedy in four parts. Part one of Lost Netheril, the gr that great wizarding empire in humanity's age of wonder. Part two of the great mage Carsus, his brief and terrible godhood and the ruin he wrought. Part 3 of Netheril's Fall, A Thousand Years of Shade, and Shars Subversion. Part 4 of Netheril's Return and Its Shadow Falling Upon the Land. Pinned by the great bard Dragon Feg, The Folly and the Fall tells the true story of the flying nethery city, Fultanthar. Fultanthar? and its dramatic return after a thousand years in exile on Char's Plain of Shadow. See the climactic battle above Myth Draenor, rendered in stunning detail thanks to the finest thermitages on the coast. Direct on your village screen as the sharp-tongued traveling troop makes its transit to Baldur's Gate. See it now or face a thousand years of sorrow. The school's attendance log fills the ancient pages. As the pages and days progress, more and more pupils' names vanish from the entries. An urgent script, a note in the margin states that some, someone has to investigate what's become of the missing children and their families. There are once two sisters, one a great fighter and one a great cleric, who long for new adventures. 
I shall skewer an elder brain upon my sword, cried the fighter, to the Underdark. I wish to know the secrets of the brain's power, said the cleric. Let us be off. In the recesses of the deep, the sisters slew darklings and darrow, bugbears and bulets. The two reached an illithid colony when the fourth ten day passed. Their quest would soon be complete. With great effort, they felled a half dozen mind flayers and soon reached the Elder Brain's lair. It rose from the brine pool and at the center of its chamber, flanked by an illithids. The brain didn't speak aloud, but the sisters could hear it in their minds. I am called Quayaz. Why have you come? Chaos? I think that's supposed to be chaos. Why have you come? I will make your powers my own, called the cleric. I will crush you and bring an end to your tyranny, said the fighter. The brain hovered in silence. A moment later, a burst of psionic energy shook the chambers, and the sisters lay dead. Good luck, Chaos replied. The Illithus feasted heartily that day. Someone's diary might explain what happened here. I guess there's a uh, dirt pile over there. <laughs> Wine. Yeah. All of them said it at once. Here, Garlic, you can have the stuff there. Gold and Malachite. healing potion and more wine the poorly drawn map of the city captain in flamboyant script what follows is the most thorough and accurate account of the city people of Baldur's Gate the sordid gem of the sword coast an editor's note in crimson follows V this volume is startlingly startlingly Accurate, save for the nonsense about the Black Dragon Gate. It is not alive. No matter how many vagrant hags claim otherwise. Commission someone else to draw the map. E. And if you don't know, the E is Elminster. Supposedly. Clara, Lady of Deception, the goddess who wears many masks, invoke her name and avoid perception. She hides your lies and secret tasks. For joy to Lyra, you must call and worship her thorough soul-felt dance. So find her presence in fest halls. Do not give idleness a chance. Leviatar's pleasure is your pain, your scars an offering. Scourge your candle with her cane. Can your devotion break? The 
the boy in the beholder. A shepherd's son tended to his father's flock on the banks of the Kiantar. The days grew long and the boy grew bored. To amuse himself, he called out, Beholder! Beholder! Shepherd came run running, but there was no beholder. The boy pointed and giggled, but the shepherd scolded him. Do not cry beholder when there is no beholder. Promise? I promise, said the boy. The next day was as boring as the last. Beholder, the boy cried, and his father rushed to his side. The boy laughed and laughed, but the shepherd only frowned and shook his head. Three days later, the boy spotted a round figure floating in the distance. It had one giant eye in the middle of its face, a mouth full of pointed teeth, and thin stalks growing from it, each with an eye peeking from the tip. Beholder, beholder, he shouted, but no one came. The beholder began to float toward him, and the boy turned and sprinted along the river. He ran and ran until he reached a high bank and could run no more. The boy cried and cowered, bracing for the beholder's deadly ray. Instead, a familiar voice said, Turn around! The boy turned. There was no beholder. Only the shepherd clad in a woolen cloak. A giant eye was painted on the front and a toothy mouth below. Vines were sewn onto the cloak's edges. You scared me, sobbed the boy. That makes us even, said his father as he dried the boy's tears. And the boy never cried beholder again. What that? What a land is Cormier! Certainly, the geography is dramatic, edged by mountains and sea, filled with forests and swamps. But why dwell on these when the great walls of Suzale lay loom ahead? One sees the city's walls as one approaches, but there is no understanding them from a distance. It's only as one gets close, and they loom higher and higher and higher, that one appreciates the majesty of Suzale. I passed through the gates the size of castles to enter this magnificent city. The streets are patrolled by elite armored knights known as Purple Dragons and frequented by na nobles. Nobles. <laughs> Nobles in the most elegant fashions. Its port is filled with ships from the, across the sea of fallen stars, carrying goods from lands I only knew from legends. The docks overflow with fruits and spices, silks and animal pelts. You will not see a finer market if you have the golden lions to spend. Also, the harming of cats is strictly forbidden, a thoroughly civilized land. So I didn't even notice. We're level five now. Counter spell is a good one to have. And fireball. We can have fireball. Yay. Hit. Darkness is my race spell.
Gale's level 5 now, too. He's the same spells I cast. <laughs> Counter spell and fireball. Play Zell's level five. Got Misty Step. And Mazora's laughing in the background, so this is Will. Who can also get fireball? See, he gets an Eldritch Invocation. Already has Repelling Blast and Agonizing Blast. I think I'm going to go with Meyer the Mind. You can cast slow with the Warlock spell slot. That reminds me, I should find his weapon. I'm sure I forgot about it again. Carla could be level 5 too. Let's see, she's leveled up to level 5. And she has a racial ability of Branding Smite. Next level for them, we're multi-classing. And you've got nothing to show for it but your own arse! Alright, let's stop that. You keep pushing bottles. A barrel. I guess we're gonna go outside to look at the cupboard. Hey. Hey, there's a beehive up there. Where are you going exactly? Oh, up the ladder. Well, at least you know your way around here. I just do. Ah, can it do it? We're just gonna shove you right off the roof. Oh, I failed. Oh, enough waiting. I crave blood. So you do it. <laughs> yeah, I started a fight, but it was fun. Oh, 
I started a fight before I uh, fixed my spell slots. No fireball for me! One booyog down. Be a gentleman. Step to it. <laughs> the humor makes it worth it. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> this is my time. And again, I I even said it out loud so I would remember, and I forgot to bind his weapon again. I'm bad at Warlock. This is gonna feel good. Oh, I missed. I don't think I'm gonna be able to shoot from it. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to hit anyone with that. Now you can hit the shadow heart. Victory awaits. Shirts of the D&D world. <laughs> uh, I need to rest. The sunset can't come quickly enough. Yeah, after I loot everyone, I think we're gonna take a long rest. Get those spell Since slots back up. Carry me. Okay. I, you know, you didn't have to actually just... throw yourself off the roof. Well, I mean, like, after 200 years of not being able to go in the sun, maybe, maybe you would switch on a dime, too. I'll take that. Okay. Also, technically, he's an elf. He doesn't sleep. He just goes into a trance. So maybe it works differently for him. I just do. And the others get drunk off their charm as it can.
shift around. Guys, there is a ladder. You don't have to stand up there. I like that none of the other goblins care that we just killed everyone on the roof. You know what? Fair point. Fair point. They might not have even realized it was me. A long-winded introduction explains that Haskin... She's... Silifin? Snotes? Published as is from their work journal have helped bring alchemy to the masses. It starts with a full history on the Dragonborn, who have been descaled as teenager. Wait. It starts with a full history on the Dragonborn, who had been descaled as a teenager and started their alchemical research in hopes of restoring their hide. Interesting. As it as the pages turn, it continues to wax poetic about how they put aside their own research to help common people. Much more interesting, though, are his their actual research notes. I have decided I should shall make all my notes, both those written and those still to come, available to those who should wish to study. You reading this text now are probably one such person. As enticing as potion making is, we shall first start with the most basic alchemical rule, the rule of three. Most ingredients can be found in Ralph Bayrune, however, they need to be refined to be of any use in alchemy. Doing so is simple. Just combine three of the same ingredients and you will obtain an ex extract, which can be used to brew potions, poisons, oils, and elixirs. So remember, three of the same ingredients make an extract, or in rhyme form if you like. When it dealt with alchemy, just recall the rule of three. Thrice the same ingredient forms an extract. The ledger is filled with cultivation instructions for a range of medicinal plants. One entry is underlined, deliver specially requested plants to the seller. Keep away from prying eyes. Another potion of healing and a potion of sleep. Look 
give it a shot. As you know. Oh, did you all just finally find the ladder? Well, not all of you. Harlax decided to stay up there. Ah, there she goes. Now she's coming. The pride of the gate. At least things have stayed interesting. Book. Give me the fireball. Uh, you know what? I do have to repair the spell. That's what I thought. Counter spell. Acid arrow, not beef. Thing. Oh no, Shadow Heart fine. Usually she's also missing some prepared spells for some reason. How much further can I go? Something good here, I hope. Regarding strange riders in these go. parts. The date on the letter has faded with time, but the paper alone indicates great age. My fellow citizens, my fellow, fellow citizens, we are, like it or not. I print and post multiple copies of this notice in the region at no small expense to myself because I feel a growing concern and alarm at the presence of strange riders in these parts of late. Many of you will have seen them tramping through our forests and towns under the guise of patrol. They claim they are guardians sent from Elturel to protect the borders of the great and holy nation of Eltergard. Don't be fooled by shining armor or handsome mounts. I never bent the knee to any elder guard. And I never asked any metal jester to come peering over my garden fence. As you all know, I am descended from the original Selenite settlers along these banks. And I have a half-elven great-uncle who will swear to it. We're peaceable folk. And we get on with the druids well enough. But I pay no fealty or tax to any far-off city I can't even find on a map. I took no small pleasure in telling these thugs just that, and I urge you to do the same. They call themselves Hell Riders. I call them interlopers, and they can bugger off to the hells, them and their city both. With great concern and serious intent. Damon Briska. Proud and free! Citizen of the Heartland. Come on. Oh, that's just my son, son. What? Go in here. Come on, that opens the crate. Ooh, an old key. Didn't even notice that. What's inside?
wish I had a bag of holding. Lots of wine. Shadow Heart and Carlac will be happy. Gotta kill all the loots. Oh, oh! Oh, you're gonna shoot it in my head. Okay. Keep accidentally shooting the fire wine barrels instead of picking them up. Anybody need to talk? Nope. Glad to have an ally. Don't talk to people anyway, though. <laughs> now there's a bloody devil trailing after us. Well, this gets better and better. Shop around, he said. He seems sure we won't find anything. And he might be right. We've had no luck so far. We'll have to cross that bridge, bridge when we come to it. If we don't know what we're walking into, that bridge will collapse under us. The devil has a plan. He's playing with us. Gazador, my old master, liked to toy with people too. Let them think there was hope right until the end. Until he snatched it all away. Creatures like them don't play games unless they know they can win. So what do we do? We keep hunting for answers. What other choice do we have? This is no ordinary mind flare parasite. Who tampered with it and why? What do they have planned for us? And why are we important enough that a devil comes knocking on our door? If we find those answers, we might have a chance. I, tell you, you I fight suppose it. you want to hear about Casador. I mean, that's not what I was coming over here for, but okay. You don't have to tell me anything you don't want to. I don't want to say a damned thing, but that won't do anyone any good. Casador Tsar is a vampire lord in Baldur's Gate, the patriarch of his coven and a monster obsessed with power. Not political power or military power, I mean power over people. The power to control them completely. He turned me nearly 200 years ago. I became his spawn. And he became my tormentor. How are you turned? Did he attack you? Not him, no. A gang of thugs attacked me. Angry about a ruling that I'd handed down as magistrate. They beat me to death's door when Cazador appeared. He chased them off and offered to save me, to give me eternal life. Given that my choices were eternal life or bleed to death on the street, I took him up on the offer. It was only afterwards I realized just how long eternity could be. been a slave ever since a vampire's spawn is less than a slave they're a puppet we have no choice but to obey our master's commands they speak 
and our bodies react. It's all part of the deal. Sometimes he'd order us to submit to torture. Sometimes he'd have us torture ourselves. Whatever his weather vain mood settled on. That sounds terrible. I'm so sorry. Thank you. But this isn't about sympathy. <laughs> it's about knowing what we might be up against. The Mind Flayers aren't the only monsters out there. And they might not be the only ones hunting us. All I'm asking is that you keep your eyes open and watch out for anything lurking in the shadows. You keep me safe, and I'll do the same. What more could I ask? Now, is that all? You can feed on me tonight, if you'd like. Then I'll see you tonight, you sweet, generous thing. What do you make of Raphael still? I won't lie. It's tempting. If I keep the tadpole, I risk transforming into a grotesque monster. If I lose the tadpole, Cazador has control of me, body and soul, and I return to the shadows. It's grim either way. So why not sell what's left of my soul to a devil? Better he has it than Cazador. I understand the appeal. I'm glad to hear it. Whatever's coming, we need to keep our options open. How does someone become a vampire, exactly? It's simple. Just find a vampire that will drink your blood and turn you into a vampire spawn. Their obedient puppet. In theory, the next step is to drink their blood. Once you've done that, you're free, and a true vampire. In theory? You'd have to drink Cazador's blood to be free. I think I like free better. Free and a true vampire, capable of creating my own coven. Yes, although I'd settle for just killing the bastard. I wouldn't be a true vampire, but I'd be free of him. Enough. Fucking Harlack. Can't believe that devil just took us into the hells with a snap of his fingers. If I see him again, I'll wring his neck. I'd enjoy watching that. I knew I liked you. Raphael was his name, right? He's trying to lure us into a game he knows we can't win. I'm not playing. Glad you're not either. In your expert opinion, what's the best way to kill a devil? Depends on the type. Ice devils hate an inferno, but that's an easy one. Orthons love projectiles. What they don't love is getting their bombs lobbed right back in their faces. Demons, on the other hand, every demon is absolutely singular. You can't ever think you've got them typed out. Sharp instincts, sharp weapons, and a knack for improvisation. That's the only way to survive them. <laughs> anyway, what were we talking about? This isn't where I thought I'd end up. How about you? <laughs> Funny you should ask. I was just thinking about what would have become of us without that Nautiloid. I mean, I know where I'd be. Trapped in Avernus still, with the Blade of Frontiers on my tail. But what about you?
this is all there has ever been. I remember only snippets of red. It'll come back to you. Maybe you'll recognize something we passed, or maybe we'll find out what happened to you. I get the feeling we've got a long road ahead of us. I hope we find you some answers along the way. Scratch. Yes. Yes. Just when I think I've got a grasp on our dilemma, a devil shows up. <sighs> no matter. We've dealt with every other oddity thrown at us lately. We can handle this one too. Now, as for this Raphael, he knows our secret. He claims he can help. What do you make of him? That's because that model is just a picture. <laughs> It's still too much for my computer to handle to have an actual moving model. One one day it will be an actual moving model, but right now I can only have a picture. He's a devil. We shouldn't trust him. Simple no as that. At all. He seemed powerful and very knowledgeable about our problem. Not the worst prospect we've stumbled across. As long as you can look past what he is. I'm not going to just change my mind. We can't trust Raphael. Good. That's what I wanted to hear. He's clever. Carlax listening in, I see. My tactic when dealing with enemies of Shah. You don't need a scourge or a rack to break people. Fear and self-doubt are sufficient. When actual pain comes, the victim's already done the heavy lifting for their torturer. There were no right answers with that devil. He was toying with his food. Us. I... Didn't realize you were so well versed in mental and emotional torment. Aren't you glad that I am? It's an effective trick. Watch out for it. And for Raphael. Uh, I just want to talk about all that's happened to us. What's on your mind? How am I holding up in your estimation? I don't think I've ever had a confidant quite like you. And if I have, I can't remember them. I'm glad I'm like. Even if you do judge every single thing I do. Devil Raphael flaunts his paltry wings as if he wants to impress us. You saw the red dragon slaying his infernal kin above hell's fires, did you not? Next to a dragon, the devil's a gnat. When I am Kithrak, I will take my queen Vlakith his head as a trophy. Kithrak. What does that mean? Githyanki knights. The riders that chase the Nautiloid. They are the commissars and enforcers of my Queen Vlakith's will. Vlakith bestows no greater honor 
To wield a Kithrak silver sword is my destiny. I will earn my queen's favor, and I will conquer every layer of hell should she command it. Why were the knights chasing the mind player ship? The Geich are my kind's mortal enemy. It is not unusual for the Kithrak to give chase. To penetrate the hells, this is unusual. But I'm not one to question the wisdom of my queen. I can see but to the horizon. Blackest sight pierces the many plains. The devil with the silver tongue. An old fairy tale my father read to me. The kind with a hero, a villain, and a moral. A farmer made a deal with the devil, so the story goes. In exchange for the farmer's dearest fruit, the devil granted him a bottomless coin purse. The farmer's dearest fruit, naturally, was no apple nor peach, but his beloved daughter. We can learn a lot from fairy tales, don't you think? The right teacher, yes. What are your thoughts on the devil, Will? Refuse him, no matter how tempting the offer, no matter how delicious the feast he lays out for you. The cost's always too great. Don't worry, I have no interest in the devil's deal. That's because you still have hope. But when he becomes your last hope, remember this. He'll require of you only what you're least ready to part with. And then require more still. You might think you'd give up anything for a cure. But the devil won't take just anything. He'll take everything. Do you feel as flattered as I do? Fight it to die with a devil. <laughs> Devils rarely approach mortals with some nefarious intent. It'd be wise to avoid them. Don't let his bluster fool you. All that talk of desperation merely illustrates his own. I think he wants something from us, badly, and in that knowledge lies our opportunity. But what is it that this devil wants so very badly? Our souls. But I suspect that's but his opening offer. Let me play the devil's advocate. The man is too eager. Do not dismiss his offer out of hand. If there's one quality all the denizens of the hells embody, it's ambition. A quality they share with many humans, come to think of it. And how do you propose we beat a devil at his own game? By figuring out his true intentions. Fact one, there's something very strange and very powerful about our tadpoles. Fact two, a devil offers to take it away. Devils aren't known to aid mortals out of simple kindness. Whatever Raphael wants, we must be the key to getting it, along with our tadpoles. So, I say for now, we wait. If I'm right, Raphael will seek us out again, and when he does, there's a mighty bargain to be made. Remember his Cormirian rhyme? Down came the claw. Perhaps we should start growing our nails. I do enjoy our conversations. What do you need? All that talk of ambition, Gale's just talking about himself.
Let's see, what are we eating tonight? Please put some of that food back. That is, that is too much food. Suddenly it's not enough food. <laughs> it said 73. Anyway, we've got a pair, just one pair, four bottles of Schultz fires. Well, we're finally digging into the wine. Nine red apples and two dried pork sausages. Fruit and sausage board with wine. Okay. Can you put your clothes on? Thank you. Shouldn't have wished to live in more interesting times. <laughs> oh, now there's a camp event. We'll leave camp and then come back and see what that is. In the day, oh, no, no, in the day, yes. Oh, ah, it's the star and there you are, ah. my friend. <laughs> At your service. Are you now? <laughs> Don't make promises you can't keep, darling. <laughs> Thankfully, I've had my needs met this evening. I found a bear. He took a little of my blood. I took all of his. Sounds like a dangerous meal. So is any meal worth having? It's nothing compared to... Well, uh, other things I could be dining on, but significantly better than the rats and bugs Cazador served me. Sounds delicious. <laughs> it was exactly as appetizing as you'd think. Still, that was the past. I'll never have to grovel for him again. True, you can start over. You can be better than what he made. Exactly. I can be better than him. Stronger. More powerful. More... Oh. You meant... Be kinder. Pet bunnies, that sort no, of thing. No, not necessarily. I have no objection to being nice, of course. Once I have the power to bend others to my will. <laughs> You are talking to the person who did that to Alfira. We're not powerless. Tadpoles are quite the asset. <laughs> Indeed they are. And now that I can walk in the sun, <laughs> well... That opens all manner of doors. It could open some coffins, too. <laughs> no, 
These tadpoles are a gift I intend to use to the fullest. You should do the same. Hello, my dear. Then I'll see your delicious self tonight. Come on. Let me wake up. Where am I needed? There we go. Still breathing, despite everything. Hey, scratch. Uh, <laughs> just sliding along the ground. Would you love me if I was a worm? him to drop the ball. Oh no. Poor and I'm bloodless. Oh. Just quick save here. Just in case. Well I think just auto save so. Okay, there we go. We got the ball from Crab. Oh boy. He relinquishes the ball. It is well chewed and slick Gross. with the cool. His eyes track the ball avidly. He shuffles on his paws, ready to chase after it. And him. Scratch's tongue lolls out happily, his tail wagging even faster. Sky, hi, pretty boy. You having a bad dream? You okay? I'm curious. Oh. Okay, there it goes. That's loaded. Sorry, it again. <laughs> that have Looking all just been one night. Just looking. What are you doing? I'm looking too, but not seeing very much. Another quirk of my affliction. Do you miss it? Seeing your own face? Preening in the looking glass. Petty vanity. Of course I miss it. I've never even seen this face. Not since it grew fangs and my eyes turned red. You have nothing to worry about. It's a very good face. Is it? 
What do you see when you look at me? Strong, piercing eyes. Maybe, if I click it. Oh. There we go. <laughs> go on. That dangerous smile. Very good. Now just tell me I'm beautiful and we can call it a day. You're pretty good. Not Gail good, but pretty good. Tarlac is beautiful. You're fine, though. <laughs> you don't have Lazel's charm, but you're alright. You're fine. Now, Shadowheart. There's a beauty. Honestly, Will's more my type. Which one would he hate, Kalara? Gale? I've actually done the Gale one before. Kind of just scoffs. And it, it. It's just. Teasing kind of way. How dare you? I thought we had something special. Still, you're nice too. There you go. I better get some beauty sleep. It seems I need it if I'm to catch up with the competition. I apparently had a lot of tension in my neck. Very good. Now just tell me I'm beautiful and we can call it a day. Observant. Mirrors aren't much use, but being reflected in someone else's eyes? Well, I could do worse. Well, I mean, if you really wanted to see yourself you could, you know, use the tadpole collect connection to actually see yourself. Oh, I hate that. I think mine's just from the weird positions I've been sleeping in. Thanks to the dogs. <sighs> okay, it looks like we've gotten all the camp events out of the way. So we should be good to move forward now.
Yeah. So. Let's be on my way. Where are we going? Nope. Go over there. Open up. Run through that. Drop all of those. Fight, and now you have one. All right, that's all I've been done. Dead, done, dead, dead, done, whatever. We loot them both. Yeah, we did. Oh, you're still alive. Not for long, but you know. Pick to fight. The consequences are hardly surprising. Smack. Oh, I missed. Wanted to smack. <laughs> well, let's do their levels. Level them up. So, Astarian's now level 5. Shadowheart's level 5. And that's it. Everyone's level 5 now. Check your spell book, sure you've got everything. And add more. Spirit Guardian? Always bad. Spirit Guardian? Daylight's a good one, just in case. And silence. And let's remember Defender of the people. find Will's weapon. have a lot on my mind. And, well, in it. The skeleton got a bow. Make it hurt. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, there we go. All right, I'm invisible. Wonder if the gods are watching me. We just rested for three nights, Shadowheart. Hush. Apart from an overgrowth of moss, the well looks unremarkable. Here's the well. And on the dot. Dry stones line the wall. At the bottom, something gleams in the dappled light. I'm done the bucket. <clears throat> be careful. Those webs carry vibrations. I always think it says time for a cuddle, not time for a call. Immune to simple toxic. Sure. No? Why do you have simple toxic? One of Well, well, look what we have here. <laughs> Sense. I was wondering I why you were saying that. Outflank, outsmart. Are you right, Kai? But that will fit in my 
my back. Let it be known that I left my homeland because I was bound to my master, and not because I chose to. Were it not for the oath I swore, I would still be home serving the Zulkir, and not tending the hog top this crude hamlet. However, an oath is an oath, and I will serve him as is my duty until I am least. The early journal entries are written in delicate, intricate script that gets rougher and wilder the more pages you turn. It ends with one hastily scrawled entry. They did it. The darkness this year's got the old bastard before the Zolt could. Now he's bleeding out, and once he's gone, I'll be free of this oath. I can go back. I'll return the tome of necromancy he stole. They'll forgive me then. They'll know I'm loyal. He Jim secure in the tunnels. Once I have it, I'll slip into the cellar, take what I can carry, and then home. Let's go fight the giant spider mama. Seven damage to her. Good. I mean, she'll probably teleport right back up, but it's a ah. Ow. Yeah, 
Let's just say 30 and 44. Yeah, you can teleport down there. Max. Oh, that's it. Okay, that's fine. Do an attack. The more smack, that's your killer. There we go. Nicely done. Send that over. I guess to me. As well as that one. Disadvantage. Ah, that's also a disadvantage. What? What should I do? An 80% and you still missed. Uh, it's a glowing spider. There we go. Magic missile doesn't miss. We like it so much. What's in here? <laughs> Need to find a way through. The knowledge route. Still alive, so that's really nice. Okay, come on. I don't think the space spiders really have I feel a breeze. I wonder what's down there. Well. After you. <laughs> yeah, let's go. It's rather pretty. It looks like the diet.
for a dull moment. Let's take a short rest. Oh, better than nothing. Some of us are hurt pretty badly. Wait, there's a waypoint down here? How did I miss that? I've been this part of the game so much. How did I ever miss that there was a waypoint? Some of the dirt floating from the web that I crushed. All's well that ends not as bad as it could have. Why did I pick up that phone? Most of this book's pages have been carefully burned away. Those that remain contain a single sentence, rewritten in varying states of agitation. In her form, I find ecstasy. The spell is not enough. You try to understand the weave. True pity. Only they who were truly a weave can rightly call themselves spellcasters. Thus comes the question What is the weave? It is an essential element of the universe. It runs through everything in unseen threads. It is what makes magic possible. It is also, though I will know, will not go into further detail here, the goddess Mistra herself. See magic of the weed, Mistra, and Spellblade. The weave isn't magic precisely, rather it is the raw material from which magic is woven. Not entirely unlike how a collection of threads is shaped and formed into a garment. Those with the necessary talent and skill can manipulate the weave and perform magic by casting spells. Developing this skill takes years of learning and constant practice. 
You might have heard of those who can cast spells because they are born with an innate connection to the weave, commonly called sorcerers, or worse, because they struck a bargain with an otherworldly creature, also known as warlock. Do not see their magic is unpredictable, uncontrolled, and in some cases, not even rightfully there. No, truly know and manipulate the weave is an art, but those wiz wizards who master it will know the limitless power and beauty the weave provides. This book comprises several chapters, one for each cited source. It claims to contain first-hand transcriptions of the oral histories of several storytellers throughout the realm. Chapter 4. Palador the Swift. 700 years of age. Wood elf storyteller hailing from the wood of sharp That's weird. It's a weird thing. It took me several ten days of quiet habitation in the wood before the venerable Palador felt comfortable revealing his presence to me. The longer I stayed, demonstrating I was no threat to his health, peace, health to his health and peace, the more open he was to gentle inquiry. This tale relayed to me on a chilly morning as we stoked a small fire was like none I had heard before or since. I asked if it were fiction, and he insisted emphatically it was as true as his own right eye. Long ago, before my eyes and ears, before your lonesome quill described, there was an empire of people, or perhaps only belief, an empire of brain eaters, all wasters. They called themselves illithids, the flayers of mind. Now, in, in service to the players, passionate, made to serve the fleet. The players were untouchable, their minds a great oppressor. No proud will or passion could break against children free. Until at last, the reckoning, its source unknown, its power unproven, but its events history making, the crowd would not be trapped. Gifts children fought back valiantly, their freedom theirs, theirs been, and broke until today. Spider step boots, gold and malachite. The journal filled with hastily sketched diagrams of spiders and various spell runes. The captions are largely written in code, save for a few passages near the end that are pinned in shaky vomit. They can sense my devotion. It draws them. I hear them in the shadows whispers from the dark mother. I woke to a gift wrapped in spider silk, a pair of boots taken from a heretic corpse. Both sends her daughters to reward my faith to let me know I am on the right path. Another gift, the corpse of a drow, sigils scarred upon his face, a arachnomancer, one with the power to inhabit spider's form. It is a message calling. My blood already dries upon the deck, her blessed image carved into my skin. An ornate diagram is drawn upon this parchment depicting a crystal of some kind. 
At the bottom, two figures, a spider and an elf, are sketched with an overlapping print. A single word is pinned beneath them. Transcendent. I think that's everything here. Oh, nice. Everyone saved against the spider. Spider web. Found the blacksmith. Great. Right, Astarian, there is a trap on that chest. Blueprints, intricate blueprints for three impressive sounding weapons and some gold. Precise arcs and neatly drawn lines form the blueprints of three weapons, a great sword, a sickle, and a dagger. Each length and angle is marked with exact measurements, and forging instructions are printed carefully along the bottom of the page, emphasizing an unusual ingredient, Susser bark. The Susser bark can only be applied to an ordinary, unmodified blade. The new Susser bark, rare find. There's only one place I'm finding a Sousa tree, the Underdark. One day I'll catch a break. At least I can actually use this ladder. Normally I blow it up. Yeah. Crap. And final iron. Alright, we can go to the grove and get Charlotte. That's what my Great. engine's made of. Hang on to that. Give me the smoke powder barrel. <clears throat> Tell me, what can I do for you? Hi, Gail. What's hiding here?
Uh, I just picked up rotten cheese. I hate when I do that. At least I can sell it for gold, so I mean... Not entirely worthless. Just mostly worthless. Let's see what this does. And then I pick up a rotten mushroom. Below is a transcript of an interview with the writer and director of A Pleasurable Deal, Mr. Kingsley Hart. Interviewer, what was the inspiration behind this, if I may be so bold, entirely lewd piece of drama? Hart, it's about exploring the taboo seeing who we, as people, really are. Yes, Robert makes a deal with the Cambion, but who wouldn't? Well, I like to think most people wouldn't. Then you don't know most people. Everyone wants something. Everyone needs something. Cambion can see it. In a way, they know us better than we know ourselves. But at the end of the play, Robert dies horribly. What does that say about what we, as you but it need. You forget, Robert dies because he broke away from Carlisle. He didn't stay true to the deal they made. So you're encouraging people to make a pact with Hell's offspring to give up as Robert did his soul. We only have one life. Why not make the most of it? So what was your deal? I beg your pardon? In fact, this was your directorial debut, wasn't it? You couldn't even get published in the tabloid Alders Bash before this play came out. Did you honestly trade your soul for an erotic play? I... Alright, we're done here. Hmm. <laughs> Keep picking up the rotten food. More for me. <laughs> Astarian. What a day. I found a hat for you. <laughs> Astoria. What to do? Breathe deep and move. Let's see. Oh, you're dead. <sighs> I was wondering who this this tiefling was just standing here, but no, it's a dead body that was just standing. <laughs> Alright, let's go to the grove and talk to Damon about Parlac's heart.
We have internal iron now. The road to Baldur's Gate is a long one. And who knows how long it'll take these folks to get there on foot. If they make it. They're slow, vulnerable. Half or more will die long before Basilisk Gate. Doesn't seem to trouble you a jot. What good would it do for me to be troubled? We can't save them all. Oh. Come here, Gail. Already feeling better. My condition is worsening again. I need to consume some powerful magic or it may become volatile. Here, eat this flail. I don't want it. Thank you. Strange experience. Each time anew, like a lost soul is spelunking through the darkness that is me, only to be sacrificed on the dread altar of the heart. Somehow the second artifact hasn't had the effect of the first. Somewhat relieved the discomfort, but I fear my hunger hasn't quite. Ugh. Gail, what's happening? The magic isn't having the effect it should have. It's not like the last time, like a rainstorm that quells a forest fire and merely drizzles. The embers still sizzle, the fire remains undefeated. I'm not certain what's going on, but nothing good. Please, I need to think. I need to retrace my steps to a glade of calm and think. Thank you for the artifact. A great deal of trouble it was, too. A great deal of trouble, indeed. Well, um... Happy, happy to help, I suppose. That's coming. It's Scarlet. Good. Why did you just take out around here? So I want from Elderell. What's your story? I spent a good bit of time in the hells. Enlisted against my will by the Archdevil Zariel. Same as you, I suppose, if you're from Elderell. The devils were delighted when your city was swallowed up. I thought they had you for keeps. Glad you got out. I got lucky. It looks like you did too. And... You brought some infernal machinery with you. A little gift from Zariel. Keeps me burning hot. Very hot by the smell of it. Might be burning out a piston ring or leaking oil. Mind if I take a listen? Be my guest. But don't get too close or your eyes will melt shut. Phew! You really are burning up. Whoever put that engine together tried to house metallurgized Demano valves inside a Ragnax alloy casement. Very risky. I might be able to help. I'd need infernal iron. And a prayer that might hey, I have that. Work. That thing isn't meant to operate outside of Ernest. I'm not sure how much longer it'll keep running the way it's going. Will you be able to turn down the temperature a little? Worried I'm gonna go in for a handshake and singe someone's arm off one of these days. I'd worry about surviving the night first. But help one, help both. 
If we can cool you off, it'll stabilize your engine and allow you to touch whomever you please. Hey, soldier. I think we picked up some of that infernal iron already. What say you? Should I give it to him? Absolutely. Please let this work. Mm. The weight of it and that blaze of chaos. Can't imagine this where my heart should be. Must be quite the experience. Give me just a moment. And I think... There. You'll have to install it, I'm afraid. I don't think there are thick enough gloves in all the realms to protect me that kind of heat. Good. I'm still burning hot as hell's hole, but I feel less changeable. Cheers, mate. Pleasure. And as for the heat, I haven't got any solutions now, but I'm not giving up. Could be if the combustion chamber had its own insulation, or if we had some kind of enchanted coolant. Find me again in Baldur's Gate. If I'm worth my salt, I'll have figured something out by then. Take care, Karlak. And hopefully the next time I see you, I'll have something promising to report. Pocket any infernal iron you find along the way, hmm? Damn, druids. Who uses wood? Depends. How many people are dumb enough to ask? Damon's upgrade didn't cool me down. But it did juice me up. I don't think I've ever felt more powerful. Let's find some evil for you to smack then. I think we'll go with two. We'll find more infernal iron and get you that second upgrade too. Sooner rather than later would be good. I feel like I'm burning serious fuel. Let's find you something to burn, then. That's what I like to hear. Now, let's trot. Standing still is making my skin itch. I love Carlax so much. Never gonna Doesn't look like anyone needs to speak with this. Yep, that's what I thought. We'll just do a partial rest. So that's where we're going to leave it here tonight. I had lots of fun. We got quite a bit done. Thanks to everyone who joined, even if it was only for a few minutes.